And right now it's time for that time when we have our special guest. Tonight's special guest is Frank Newman. Frank is a qualified accountant and investment advisor. He is one of New Zealand's most successful investment writers, having written 11 books on investment matters. Tonight we discuss in these tough times one of his books, Living Off the Smell of an Oily Rag in New Zealand, and we also give away a great investment game developed by Frank. We welcome Frank Newman as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. Frank Newman, good to see you. Wonderful. Gerard, welcome to The Beat Goes you. On. Thank you. Great to be here, Gerard. Living off the smell of an oily rag. I can remember my mother. That was one of her favourite sayings. Living off the smell of an oily rag. It's a great. Where did the term come from? Well, um, it goes back to about 1999, actually, when I wrote the first oily rag book. It was yeah. called How to Live Off the Smell of an Oily Rag, and it was really quite a simple publication, only about a um, hundred odd pages. Um, but it was Great suggested book, to me by a by a distributor. I had written a number of books at on that investment, time, on investment rich, matters, yeah. etc., etc. Yeah, complete um, opposite to him. Uh, well, it was all on money matters, so um, they all had done quite well. In fact, I had a number one seller in 1987, um, and things got a bit tough in 1989 it was actually, not 99. Um, so my distributor asked if I could write a book on budgeting and how to save money. did tremendously well. It went to number three, I think, on the bestseller list, and in total has sold over over 100,000 copies. Um, so, wow, congratulations. Yeah. Mm. So from that yeah. came more ways to live off the smell of an oily rag, feasting off the smell of an oily rag, and more recently, living off the smell of an oily rag, and soon to be, feasting off the smell of an oily rag will be revised. Now so. you've written, in fact, 11 books altogether. Mm. And so if you look at the, the books, um, some of the earlier titles were... Uh, the very first one was The Small Investor's Guide to the Share Market, written in 86, mm. published in 87, did extremely well until October 87. <laughs> we all remember that day. <laughs> and then I did um, uh, Making Money in New Zealand, uh, How to Grow Rich, uh, what else, um, The Seven Ways to Wealth, um, The New Zealand Landlord's Handbook. Um, making money on the New Zealand share market, uh, and then the Orly Rag series, and there might be one there I've forgotten, I'm not sure. What is interesting is how to grow rich. I mean, that's interesting, mm. but it's the complete opposite to living off the smell of an oily rag, isn't it? There's, there's, well, um, there's, there's two people here, isn't there? I think there's actually three parts to how to grow rich. Yeah. There's essentially making money, get a good job, get a good yeah. income, go up the corporate ladder if you're employed. If you're self-employed, how to make more money in your business. That's the first leg, if you like, of three legs. The second leg is how do you save it once you've earned it? Mm. And that's living off the smell of an oily rag, and that's where it fits in. Um, and, and of course you've got this wonderful game mm. here that you have um, brought onto the market in 2009, the New Zealand investment game. Right. Well, that, that's of course the third leg, because once you've saved the money by living off the smell of an oily rag, how do you invest it wisely? And the game is very much a simulation of the investment markets to show those wise investment principles. Before we go any further, let's talk about Frank Newman. Baby boomer on the cusp? What, uh, 51. Uh, 51. <laughs> you just scrape it. <laughs> what year were you born? Uh, 59. 59. Coming up, this, yes, coming up to 52. And you are married to a famous New Zealand politician? Mm, Muriel Newman. Muriel Newman. I bet you have to vote ACT. <laughs> <laughs> but you started off as an accountant. Is that uh, where it all started, Frank? Yes, pretty much. A qualified accountant. Mm. Then went into share broking, which was a lot of fun at the time because that was the 1980s, of course. Mm. Um, and that's really where I did gain an interest in investment. And um, I certainly do like the um, share market investment side of things. What are us baby boomers, and I could say, what, what are us New Zealanders like handling money? Are we good or...? Are we, We're or pretty we, poor. Yeah, we? yeah, I think that uh, the government has pretty much uh, recognised that as well, hence KiwiSaver. We as a nation need to save more. Um, and that in many cases means living without debt. And that's why people do need to live off the smell of an oily rag so they can live within their means. And basically, in my view, people need to save at least 10% of their income. Baby boomers, in many cases, need to save more because they haven't saved in the past. Mm. So they may need to save 15 to 20% of their income, which becomes quite, quite an ask. We did live carefree, didn't we? we uh, yeah. Us baby boomers, we thought that we were going to live forever. Mm. And, um, 
we were a new generation. We were going to do things differently, but in the end, we don't do it any differently, do we? You still, no. have, to, um, you still have to buy your milk in the morning, don't you? Yeah, you do. <laughs> and it's a matter of, uh, it's really a point of buying wisely in many ways. Um, and really living off the smell of an oily rag is not about living without, it's about uh, making the most of the money you have. Mm. And let's take your example of, of milk you mentioned. Um, in fact, I've got a couple of examples yes. here. Shall I show one? <laughs> That's why I mentioned milk. This um, here is your typical two litre bottle of blue top milk, mm -hmm. Anchor brand, uh, produced of course by Fonterra. Sells right. for about $4.90. Yes. So that's what most people will be buying in their yeah. shopping trolleys. $4.90. Now compare that to this bottle, which is also on the same shelves, perhaps a bit lower down maybe, produced by Dairydale, which is also a Fonterra company. That sells for around $2.90. That's a huge yeah. difference. It's ex that? exactly the same, same milk. milk. It's the same milk, and that's what people don't realise. They see the fancy packaging and make an assumption that the more expensive milk is a better quality. But it is exactly the same milk in the two bottles. And that's true for many products, not just milk. You see, the difference between four ninety and two ninety is quite a lot of money. That's um, that's and you a significant add that up percentage. Three hundred and sixty five right. times yep. a year. It starts to add up, yep. doesn't it? And, and that's only milk. And if you look at all of the other products in the mm. supermarket shelves, there's a similar story to be had. In fact, on average you could save about 36% roughly, um, or precisely, um, by buying unbranded products or your cheap brands like Dairydale as opposed to Anchor. What drives us to take that, uh, the Anchor? Is it their, um, their advertising, advertising, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Dairydale is not advertised. Mm. It sits in the market at a low price point to appeal to the oily raggers of the world, mm. um, yet Anchor is heavily advertised and appeals to the people who, who Want quality, who want a quality product, not realising actually that the quality is exactly the same. Now it turns out there's quite a few oily raggers in New Zealand, isn't there? You've had a wonderful success with that. Mm. First of all, just this little book, it started mm. it off. Today, of course, you've got the website. And how many people come to the website uh, seeking advice, uh, Frank? What, what, oh, what, have you, what have you set in place? It's actually got a little bit of out of, out of hand. The yeah. numbers are so large. In fact, there's now 3,000 people on my mailing list that receive the newsletter on a regular basis. Wow. But I just, don't, I just don't know how many hits we get. It's just too much for me to, to manage at the moment. Um, but essentially it's become a community where people can exchange ideas. And the great thing about the Oily Rag community is it's not hardship. It's, mm. it's a lot of fun. And um, so, so people gain a lot of joy and pleasure actually out of buying better so they have more money left to do um, with what they like, really. Now, that's interesting. So these people aren't on the poverty line. Right. What they're mm. saying is, look, we're, we're living quite comfortably, but we love the concept that we don't have to be spending yep. all this money. So what, what part of the psychology is that? Uh, what do you think um, they simply hate waste. waste. They hate wasting the, the $2 difference between these two bottles of milk. Mm. Um, so they say, well, why should I buy a $4.90 bottle, bottle of milk when mm. I can buy the two ninety one and save myself $2? Um, and they can obviously use that $2 elsewhere um, uh, on something they enjoy. So for, for many people, it's about uh, avoiding waste. And for many people, it's about getting back to the basics again, getting out of the, the rut, if you like, yeah. of being persuaded by the advertisers exactly. all the time. You're getting back to the basics and the, and the things you really enjoy in life. Now, the next stage, of course, as you're saying, if you uh, follow the principles here expressed, you're going to be saving money, but then it, it, once you've got some money in the bank, you have to invest it wisely. Yeah. Yes, now, you do. We're poor at that in New Zealand, aren't we, investing? If, I could, uh, if, I, if I'm watching the television, you hear these terrible stories, you see them at um, following those people like Blue Chip, and you see Mr. and Mrs. Uh, sitting down the front, they've lost their life savings. Hanover finance investors today are voting either for or against a proposed rescue package for the company. The company has also ordered no media filming or photography of the meeting. You're feeling about the reason and why this meeting has happened? I, I, I've got three questions I ask myself. Mm -hmm. If they go ahead with this what I'm doing is loaning them money for five years. Am I happy with the management? Well, when I look at their performance, how could I be? 
question to the trustees. Have they served me well? The answer is no. Do I have any faith in the independent director they put in? No, I haven't. Thirdly, am I impressed with Mark, uh, what's his name, Hodgkin and Eric Watson? I think they're feathering their own nest. I don't think they give a damn about me. So that's three no's and three strikes and you're out. That must make you cringe when you see that, that they mm. listening to bad advice. Mm. It does because the principles are really quite simple. Um, you know, uh, most um, deposit taking organisations have credit ratings. So it's a fairly simple matter of having to look, having to look and seeing what the credit ratings are of these institutions mm. and simply being judged by that. In many cases, the finance companies that were heavily advertised on TV actually had a very poor credit rating, but people didn't actually take the time to have a look behind it. How can they find this information out? I mean, it's, it's readily available? Oh, it's, it's actually published. Yeah, it's readily published. So, so at the time when the blue chips were in full force and the handovers, could you find out that things weren't as well? Hmm. Well, as Hanover, Hanover, for example, did advertise its double B rating and it actually promoted it as a virtue. Well, double B rating is not investment grade. Uh, unfortunately, the ratings are not all that easy to follow in the sense that it's not a rating from 1 to 10 and everything above 5 is good. It goes from A to D, D in default. So uh, you do need to really have a look on the internet and just see exactly how a double B rates to see how good the investment is. At the time, it seemed that they were God. You know, they were on the TV1 network news every... Mm. Uh, how can people cope with that type of, uh, it looks so legitimate, doesn't it? Well, um, I think it pays to have a, a healthy suspicion, really, of, of, um, of advertisers in many ways, because mm. they are advertising, you know, with a purpose, and, and it may not tell the full story. So you do have to be a little bit savvy, um, but for those who don't have the knowledge, you, you, there are investments that you can go to that, that are very safe anyway. Uh, most managed funds, for example, are pretty safe because they don't take on debt. Um, government stock is always an option. And of course, most of the banks are very safe as well. So um, it's really a matter of just being sensible, taking a long-term view, protecting the value of your capital and not chasing that extra 1% to 2% that you can get in these high-risk ventures. Gosh, when you look at it now, I sometimes think, just leave your money in the bank. Depends a little bit on your age, because obviously the older you get, the more uh, the, the uh, less risk you, you should take on. So you need to be much more conservative with, with your investments as you get older. So for, for many people, um, say over the age of 60, for example, they should be shifting their investments into fixed interest type deposits, very secure ones like the banks. What's your best advice to us baby boomers now who may have look, even as low as $10,000 saved, what's your advice? What, what, what should they do? Well, they should certainly um, enrol in KiwiSaver mm. if they haven't already, because that is actually a pretty good investment given the contributions are, are virtually doubled by their employer and you've got the $1,000 kickstart. So you can't go too far wrong on KiwiSaver. And of course, at the age of 65, you can withdraw your, your full savings plus all your entitlements. So it's, for most baby boomers, it's a fairly short time horizon, in fact, to get your money back. So it's a very good investment. What's the best investment out there? Uh, well, that, that, is, that simply depends. Um, um, over the uh, long term, property is a very good investment, but you do need to have a very long term time horizon, and that may not suit baby boomers who may have a much shorter time horizon. Essentially, um, uh, investment is about long-term investment. So if you're a 20-year-old, for example, you could quite happily invest in shares and property uh, and just simply work through all the, the highs and lows, the cycles. The baby boomers, of course, must be more conservative, much more in cash, in the banks, uh, in fixed interest type investments. Frank, we've run out of time, but we can't leave without saying to the people of New Zealand, you could win this, this wonderful game called the New Zealand Investment Game. We have two of these wonderful games to give away. Would you like to win one? And we need a question from Frank. If Frank can give us a question, all you have to do is email Jared at the beat goes on and in the subject line, you have to have the answer. What's the name of the game we're giving away this week? There it is, the New Zealand Investment Game. That's how simple it is. 
Gosh, you're good at simple questions and answers. <laughs> <laughs> now, Frank, you mentioned living off the smell of an oily rag and the website. We, it would be great if we had the website. What's, what's it called? Okay, oilyrag.co.nz. Well, that's pretty simple, isn't it? It is. Oilyrag.co.nz. And what will you find there when you get to the, uh, the website? You'll find a lot of tips um, sent in by readers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just packed full, and full of tips, basically. Frank Newman, thank, thank you. you for coming on The Beat Goes On. It's been we'll great. See you again in the future. Thank you. Thanks.